All right, so in the previous lesson, we started going, let's go to the uh, MSDN, we started going over this diagram, actually we went over it maybe even two or three times. So let's continue. So basically, basically, um, in Direct Show, what we have is pre-built components that we can connect with with pre-built connections so that we can build applications that play files or that record files or that record to the web and play from the web and ultimately transmit multimedia through the internet in real time. Let's continue to the next diagram. So what they explain over here is basically um, the way we, the, the way direct show applications work is that there is they say that there is three steps. The first step is that the application creates what's known as a filter graph manager. We'll understand what that is later. And then the second step is that the application using the filter graph manager builds a graph of components it's called a graph of filters and connects them and the third step is that the application calls this uh, graph and listens for events that the graph uh, updates the graph uses events to update the application and let the application know what's happening also they n forgot to mention that at the end the application tears apart the graph right and they explain these three steps over here which is very nice let's go to the next how to play a file the next topic how to play a file very nice so in order to play a file yeah this is going to be the first example that we're going to put together together so the first step is um, every every directional application has to invoke or every thread in a directional application has to invoke in the beginning the co initialize the co initialize or com initialize uh, function so let me take let me take let me take this block and copy it and this is basically what I'm going to be doing I'm going to be taking blocks of code to our application excuse me and um, and we're going to be developing this our application step by step using the pre-built the pre-written code from the MSDN alright so let me hit click here enter right button click and paste let me move this over to the right using the tab key and F6 let's see if this works build succeeded alright so what do we have here so we're invoking co-initialize passing it null now it will return uh, to a variable that we call hr of type h result h result as you can see is type uh, defined to be uh, as a long so it's basically long so all right it's a 32 bit positive and negative value all right and then we're going to be testing if this HR value using the failed macro and the failed macro as you can see is just a macro defined so that if HR is less than zero well it, it just returns true in case HR is less than zero so if HR is less than zero and here we can add our error handling code very nice. So let's use F11 again. F11, F11. Very nice. HR returned SOK. That's good. 
that's good. And and you know we can even return HR so that whoever invokes our application can actually have a return value and they can know whether our application succeeded or failed. It's a very simple application at this time. Nevertheless, it's a good idea. All right, very nice. So um, now sometimes it might just happen that HR will fail. Well, right now it succeeded, but in case it fails, I, I'd like to know about it right away. And what I always do is I throw exceptions. That's what I do. All right. Um, you know what? Even even better, right? We noticed when we read through the MSDN in one of the pages, let's go back, we noticed that there was an AM get error text function. So let's go to the documentation. Let's invoke this function. Let me copy this. I even think that they have an example over here. Very nice. Very nice. So they have a function show error, which is very nice. Now, since, let's go back to the Visual Studio, since all of the uh, direct show functions are going to return H result values, and we'll always need, almost always, we'll almost always need to test their values that in case they fail, there would be no point in letting the application continue to run. So, so it, it, it's a good idea to take this implementation and also copy it over to our, uh, to our application so that any time we have, uh, so, th so that we can, we can deal with errors, we can display errors properly. So it's, it's going to be a separate function, enter, enter, control, V. Very nice. So this is going to be the function that we'll be using, show error. But instead of show error, I'd like to use throw, this is what I'm going to call it, throw if error. Meaning if HR is an erroneous, erroneous value, we would throw an exception, a C++ exception. Very nice. So this is what I'd like to do. So in case of this comment. Let me remove the comment and let me call throw if control space. Oh, it completes me. Very nice. And let me pass HR. And actually the, even the if, this if, let me transplant it control X and remove this. Control ED doesn't work here. Uh, like this. So, oh, that's good. So the, the if is already there. So if failed HR, if it fails, we're going to do what? We're going to allocate on the stack this um, array of characters of size, let me stop the run and let's discuss let's discuss this code so it's going to be of a, a value 160 so we can only uh, display up to 160 uh, characters of an error of an exception but this is uh, max error text line yeah this is F12 where is this coming from this is coming from errors H all right it's something from uh, the Microsoft SDK. All right, and the next line is actually the actual invocation of Active Movie. Get error text. Uh, very nice. So we'll be passing it HR, which we received, 
and the address of the array of characters that we allocated on the stack and that we only allow up to this amount of characters and we'll be receiving back the res the result I guess value it's a double word which as you can see is an unsigned long right can only be positive value so if res is zero so there is an unknown error okay so if everything went alright so we should be having we would have a message box but but as I said I, I like to throw an exception I don't like message boxes in case of errors I like I, I like stopping everything that's the that's the ultimate reason why they invented exceptions in the first place so so in case we have an error we will be finding ourselves in this block block of code so we will be throwing an exception throw an exception can basically just be the very um, characters of the string that's okay in C++ save however in case we have a problem in case get error text fails so we'll be finding ourselves over here in such a case we also we also would like to throw an exception the exception is that there is an unknown error HR and they're assuming here that we're using um, ASCII but we're not. We'll, we'll be compiling, as they say here, as T, and T does not assume ASCII nor Unicode, so text like this. Very nice. And in any case, we'll be throwing this exception. All right, so let's hit F6 and see if this compiles oh throw if error identifier not found right because it's at the bottom so we either move our functions to the top or declare them at the top alright so let's copy the declaration to the top for now F6 very nice okay so let's see if this this works f11 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 so we're in the function hr is okay so we should be finding ourselves skipping this entire block which is good which is good and the application will, will be returning okay and finished all right so let's stop here and we'll continue this